Hello, I'm Sofia, and welcome to What We Need to Know About Ukraine. Here, I learn about Ukrainian history, literature, and culture, and share my findings with you. Today's episode is about the history of football, or soccer, in Ukraine, as well as the pioneer of modern football, Valery Lobanovsky. A country's culture comes from many places, and sports, in this case football, is an incredibly important element in which many people take part as players or as viewers. Football is not only the most popular sport in Ukraine, but it is also the national sport. It has a long and interesting history in Ukraine, and in turn, Ukrainians have left their mark on the game of football worldwide. Football came to Ukraine in the second half of the 19th century, which is approximately the time that it began developing and codifying in England, so it did not arrive here late. The first city that was introduced to it was Odessa. It was the largest trade center at the time, since it was a port city on the Black Sea. Accordingly, it was in Odessa that the first football club in Ukraine was created. It was called the Odessa British Athletic Club, which was established in 1878 by British workers of the Indo-European Telegraph Company in Odessa. They were also the ones that built the first football field in Ukraine. A few years later, the Germans created their own team in Odessa, and that was the first team that popularized football throughout the city. That is when Odessa created an official, more or less, team for itself. The first team in Kyiv was created much later, in 1902, called South, after to be renamed to Falcon. And the well-known Dynamo Kyiv was created in 1929. It was only in 1904-1906 that written rules on how to play football started appearing in Ukraine. Before this, nearly every game ended in a physical fight, since fans believed that the other team played wrong or cheated, something of the sort. The emergence of referees did not help, since the fans believed that the referees are lying and helping out a particular team. The word for football used in Western Ukraine, then in Austria-Hungary, was derived from the word to beat or to hit. Was it because of the fighting or because of the kicking of the ball? I'm not certain. The first official football match in Ukraine was peculiar and was held in Lviv in 1894. The teams were Lviv against Krakow, which is in present-day Poland. The teams played until the first goal scored, and Lviv won. But the game lasted only seven minutes. And yet, 3,000 fans came, since the match took place during a very popular fair. After the First World War, the Soviet Union, having occupied Western Ukraine, which, as I said previously, was in Austria-Hungary, disbanded all football teams there. After the First World War ended, the Second World War started, during which football games in Ukraine did not stop. Ukraine, occupied by Germany, was able to create an all-Ukrainian league. There was also an instance in 1942 when Kyiv held a tournament where German, Romanian, Hungarian, and Ukrainian football teams competed. Soviet propaganda described these events as the Germans forcing Dynamo Kyiv to play against the German football champions and warning that they would shoot the team if Dynamo would win. But for the brave Soviets, honor was more important than life, so they won and were shot to death. This interpretation is not fully accurate. There were two Kyiv teams taking part in the tournament, and the Germans they played with were soldiers, not football champions. The majority of the Ukrainian players, however, were professional footballers from Dynamo Kyiv. So yes, they did win. And yes, sadly, they were executed, not for winning the game, however. Instead, they were killed for having connections to the NKVD, the Interior Ministry of the Soviet Union. These connections were possible since many of the Dynamo players during the Second World War were ex-policemen. But of course, that is not an excuse for the murder of the players either. Well, the father of Ukrainian football and the pioneer of modern football, Valery Lobanovsky, was born in Kyiv during the Second World War. He studied thermal engineering in university and was a very good mathematician. What he learned there, he applied to football. For example, things like analytical thinking, statistics, and various systems. He started his career in football as a player. In 1961, Valery played for the Soviet Union, specifically the Namo Kyiv. 
He was a famous winger and was often able to score directly from corners. He was even compared to Didi, a Brazilian footballer who won two World Cups. He was also a perfectionist. While still a player, Lobanovsky and his team, Dynamo Kyiv, got the title of the top Soviet league, and when interviewed about his success, this is what he said. Yes, we have won the league, but so what? Sometimes we played badly. We just got more points than the other teams that played worse than us. I can't accept your praise, as there are no grounds for it. Yet soon, Lobanovsky no longer fit into Maslov's system and vision of the game. Maslov was a coach at the time. There's a story which might be true, that one of the reasons that Maslov started disliking Lobanovsky is because Valeri refused to drink vodka at lunch. In any case, Lobanovsky left Dynamo Kyiv and played in Chernomorets Odessa and Shakhtar Donetsk before retiring at the age of 29 years old. Overall, as a player, he took part in more than 250 professional games and scored more than 70 goals. At 34 years old, he was appointed to Dynamo Kyiv and placed in charge of tactics. Instead of the previous focus on physical fitness and capabilities of the players, he focused on statistics and data analysis. He tried to apply science to football. He would record what today is recorded in games, that being shots, dribbles, passes, interceptions, errors, etc. And he would try to get strategy from that data. Dynamo players were given rankings on intensity, activity, error rate, effectivity, absolute and relative, and realization. They were then awarded with a final mark computed to the third decimal point. This is popular today, but at the time it was an innovation. His players needed to know whom to pass the ball to before they even got it. They were also required to memorize set plays. Lobanovsky said, that a team that commits errors in no more than 15 to 18 of its acts is unbeatable. Clearly, Lobanovsky had his own strategy and his own philosophy of the game. In a book that he co-wrote, he said, The first thing we have in mind is to strive for new courses of action that will not allow the opponent to adapt to our style of play. If an opponent has adjusted himself to our style of play, We need to find a new strategy. This is the dialectic of the game. This shows Lobanovsky to be a pragmatic person, and he readily adapted to whatever would bring victory, changing his style for different opponents. In games, he believed in the collective group over the individual, as well as an extreme dedication and hard work. He believed that, quote, it is impossible to rely on luck in modern football. It is necessary to create an ensemble, a collective of believers who subordinate themselves to the common playing idea. His innovative and creative yet scientific approach paid off. Lobanovsky won more than 30 trophies, led the USSR to the final of Euro 1988, and coached three players to the Ballon d'Or. He ended Moscow-based club's domination in the Soviet League, Lobanovsky constructed three brilliant Dynamo Kyiv teams a decade or more apart and was utterly dominant domestically, winning eight Soviet League titles and six Soviet Cups, including three doubles from 1974 to 1990, and five Ukrainian titles and three Ukrainian Cups, with another three doubles from 1997 to 2001. And Lobanovsky's Dynamo Kyiv was the only Soviet football club to win a European Cup. He was the first manager to lead a Soviet team to European success, winning the Cup Winners' Cup in 1975 and 1986, and the European Super Cup in 1975. Lobanovsky's Kyiv consistently reached the latter stages of the European Cup, Champions League tournaments, handing heavy defeats to Western Europe's top clubs along the way. Out of all of these insane achievements, there are also some memorable games and wins which Ukrainians still remember today. 
An example of a memorable win of Valery Lobanovsky's Dynamo Kyiv team is the 3 to 0 against Bayern Munich, who won the World Cup the previous year as a major part of the West German team. The captain of Bayern and the West German team said, What Lobanovsky did for the development of football is beyond words. He was always ahead of his time. Of course, the best-known match was the 1986 Cup Winners' Cup Final, where Dinamo Kyiv won against Atletico Madrid 3-0. Players were able to pass the ball to each other really quickly without having to check their teammates' position, since their understanding of each other was that good. Of course, Lobanovsky did not just win some awards. His football was world-changing. He created the modern game that is played today. Lobanovsky has perfected the theory of football. He played and understood football the way we understand it now in the 21st century and helped pave the way for the modern era. Western Europe has adopted Lobanovsky's methods of training, preparation, and tactical planning and realized his pioneered vision of the game, thus making him one of the most important and influential coaches in football history. Valery Lobanovsky died on 13th of May 2002 in hospital after he had passed out during a game. He was awarded the title of Hero of Ukraine two days later for his years of service to Ukraine for the development of football inside the nation and also improving national prestige. After Lobanovsky's death, elite European football has come to be shaped in Lobanovsky's image and played in the style of his great Dynamo teams. It is as bright as day that Lobanovsky's greatest achievements are not only the trophies and medals his teams and players have won, but also his ability to coach individuals into team players, his development of the pressing game, and his insistence on the importance of statistical analysis. It is his innovation that completely changed how football is played all over the world today. Thank you so much for joining me today. And this is what we need to know about Ukraine this week.